Okay, so welcome everybody to the first ever chat on the Smarty Method with somebody else because I've done one episode where it was just me talking and today I am so happy that Karen Jackson is joining me. Um, So I'll quickly introduce Karen and then Karen you can kind of elaborate in case there's anything I've missed. So Karen is an author She's recently published a book called Overwhelmed and Other Words. Um, She is a human design coach. She is um, an energy and spiritual medicine kind of coach for creatives and soulpreneurs. She's a Reiki master and all the things and an essential oils educator. Um, So is there anything, Karen, that you feel like I've missed out in that? (laughs) there's loads it's always really problematic when people say what do you do I'm like oh I literally live my passions and what lights me up and yeah it's all there's always an underlying thread it's about living your purpose and doing the healing work and vibrational work to be able to do your purpose so yeah it gets a bit messy when you try and label yourself totally and it's like when I explained to you you were to my husband um I described you as a spiritual business coach, which is almost like how I see you. But I guess other people work with you in other ways. And so the way I um, was drawn, because I feel like I was drawn to you. I feel like I was like, it was like one day I knew about you. You were in my sphere through doTERRA essential oils and that area that we both kind of work in as well. Um, and I saw your name pop up. I was inquisitive. And then one day it happened very quickly. I was just like, I need to message her. I need to work with her. And you said something funny, which was on our first meeting. You had put out into the universe. I want to work with someone. Um, can't remember your exact words. And so I was like, I'd heard about human design, had no idea what it was. I, just thought, I want a human design reading. And, and I just went straight to you. And you gave me a human design reading. So for the people who don't know what human design is, which is probably quite a few, actually, what is human design? Can you describe it to us? Yes. Human design is, for me, it's a way to fall deeply in love with yourself. It was created or channeled, downloaded um, as a reason to actually help children not be conditioned by society so that they live their Mm -hmm. own purpose. Throughout our society, we get told who we should be, what we should think, the route we should take, the path we should take. And what you get is a society that actually isn't living their truth or how their energy should flow through the body. And then we get illness. Um, We don't feel well. Life feels dulled down and we're not quite living in our joy. So human design is basically an energetic blueprint created from your time, place of birth. So it's got astrolog- astrological, I can never say that. It's got elements of astrology in it. And it's to help you understand your purpose. So elements of your purpose. It won't tell you what to do. It'll give you clues. And it also gives you um, an understanding of how your energy is best to be used in the world. So it takes a lot of us away from hustle culture, from burnout, So what you were talking about, I um, have deeply embodied and experimented with my human design. So when you um, I'm there's different energy types, which we can go into. But just to give an illustration, instead of like really battling with my head and trying to work things out, I literally um, I I just had the thought, right, I really I really feel drawn to to working with somebody. I don't know who that is, but I'm going to put the energy out into the universe and let's see what happens. And when I work in that beautiful way of not trying to figure it all out, being into my body, what excites me today? What do I want to do? Literally, people get drawn to me. So I'm not having to effort. I'm not having to wear a mask. I'm just literally living and being as me, experimenting with having a free flow of energy in my body and life, which is magical. Yeah, and I love that. Like the first first words you said to me, I think apart from like hi and stuff, were um you've broken into a thousand pieces and you said uh, you had to do that to become who you are today and you can you gave the uh, metaphor or image of one of those I think they're Japanese bowls that smash and then they're put back together again with like the gold um and it begins with a K I can't remember it's and I, or something like that something like that yeah. it is and I looked it up afterwards and I always 
like I think I started crying at that point and I just thought you are seeing me in my entirety and I felt very seen and um, it was really unbelievable experience and you said in that session some words to me which are which basically have been the catalyst for me starting this business you said Rachel you're here to show people another way to work and like I'm getting chills so Mm -hmm. like it was just unbelievable that was how powerful the session was with you um and so can you talk a bit about the five archetypes is that right yeah. Word archetypes, yeah. right? it is kind of archetypes so there's a human design body graph which when you look at it looks messy it looks like it's too much information and difficult to understand and I will say it is <laughs> if you just look at it and you don't know what you're looking at that's why I believe in having readings and having guys mm-hmm. and taking your time with it but at the highest level there are five energy types in human design So this is it is like archetypal energy. This is how you're best designed to use your energy in the world. So I'll start with myself because that's easy. I'm what's called a generator. So generators and manifesting generators, which I'll talk about, have a defined sacral center. So we are literally um, called the builders of the world. We're like the Duracell bunnies of the world. We wake up buzzing like, let me at it. What 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 can I give to the day? What can I create? What can I build? We're literally just full of vitality with the proviso if aligned yeah we need to do what we love so the more we do what we love the more we power up the more energy we have to share with the world and we have this open warm enveloping aura so we people just feel good in our presence if we feel good if we're doing things that don't light us up if we're committing to things that we haven't got the energy for or that takes us away from our path then we burn out, we don't feel good, we're not in a good space. So this is highest level. There's so many intricacies and layers mm-hmm. in your human design yeah. chart, but this is, this is really powerful to understand. So that's the generators, basically here to follow passion, to do what lights you up and to have joy and give joy and share your joy in the world. Yeah. Then you've got the manifesting generators. Um, these are here, very much like generators. They have this, this um, energy as well. But they work a bit quicker. Um, They're here to break the box a little bit more, to break the mold. Um, And with each energy type, there's a strategy of how to best get through the world. So let me rewind to generators. So mine is wait to respond. And I was like, that sounds awful. I'm not, I'm a real go-getter. I'm not waiting for anyone. This is horrible. I don't like this. But really what it means is I shouldn't hustle or think my way into everything. And Mm. I've got a really good brain. So it doesn't mean don't use your brain. It means use your brain to see patterns, Mm. to see what's known in the world, not for not to try and think it into being and and will it into being. So I work best by seeing what my sacral, what my body gets lit up by, what it responds to in the world Mm. around me. So like I ask, right, I really want to work with somebody who's ready for change. I put the I put the idea out into the universe and then you pop up in my DMs. <laughs> and then I ask myself, do I want to work with Rachel? And my sick was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> so you ask the questions and you wait to see what's around you in your environment. So I want to give this because the human design language can be quite limiting and off-putting to people. So yeah. I've got a really good, really beautiful um, way of explaining this. So there was something that I really wanted to look at from a different perspective in my life to heal. So again, I experimented, right, I'm going to ask the universe, what's the best thing to do this? And I'd never heard of um, Byron Katie ever. She's a, um, she mm. does something called The Work. I heard uh, about her in a Sahara Rose podcast. I heard about her in a Dharma coaching course I was doing. I heard about her in the human design, because I always love studying, human design course. Mm. And I read about her in a book in the same week. That's the universe mm. going here. It's like follow yeah. the breadcrumbs here, look at this. And I looked, I was like, God, this is awesome some really good gems in there that I'll pull into my work so that is the idea you literally as a generator manifesting generator you're aware of what's around you and how you're responding Mm -hmm. to it does it feel expansive do I want to lean in or do I want to run away yeah do more of what lights you up so that's how we we respond manifesting generators have a bit bit of manifesto which we'll go into in a minute and Mm -hmm. um so it's good to inform it's good to let people know what you're doing because manifesting generators are very good at the pivot that's not lighting me up I'm going to do this Mm -hmm. now now I'm going to do this no I don't like it and you have complete permission to do that 
but yet society kind of forces us into a box mm. to do this and it's like no what's present mm. for me now and I was actually coaching someone last night in human design and she just it clicks she's like ah that's why I can't make a year plan and I'm like no because mm. you don't know what's going to be in your present mm. environment or what's going to light you up so no yeah. we're not designed like w- I'll never be able to say my five-year plan and yeah. you can't you can't do it so yeah and, yet, and it's like still... instead of yeah instead of feeling bad that you're not working in that quite male linear like just stick at it you know it's like giving yourself permission to work how you work and like absolutely. listening absolutely yeah basically at the heart of it we're light and we're mm. designed for flow um mm. and who says it has to be a certain way so what I love about human design is it allows us to decondition and find our own truth mm. so manifesting generators because they pivot it's helpful to let people know what you're doing otherwise they're like because you because manifesting generators work really quickly it's like where are they what are they doing now who are they now so you let people know not for permission it's just like I'm doing this now it'd be great if you come along with me or if you uh, allow me the space to do this but it's certainly not for permission it's to and you can use these techniques in your business and marketing as well and then you've got manifestors so manifestors are Literally, I see them as the rule breakers, the initiators in the world. They're here to literally initiate people into action. So I have a, I have a manifesto friend and she literally says something. I'm like, spark, do it. Boom. Something new born into mm-hmm. the world. Um, manifestors aren't sacral beings. So like projectors, which we'll get to. And Rachel is, is a beautiful projector. So mm-hmm. um, the sacral center is what gives you your life force energy. So mm-hmm. generators, mangens, they are defined. They always have this mm-hmm. energy if aligned. Manifestors and projectors don't. So that means you especially work in cycles. So you might have downers and work for days mm-hmm. and then you have to crash. So you've got a yeah. more cyclical way of being. And yet again, we're, do- we're dominated by this idea of keep going, keep doing the hustle, keep doing the grind, don't stop. And it's like, no, <laughs> manifestors mm-hmm. get a download. So an inspired download direct from the cosmos and they just initiate. So either they do it themselves or they initiate somebody into doing it for them. And it's a different way of being. It's a different way of seeing the world, a bit like projectors. So mm. manifestors have um, like sacred beings have this warm aura that I spoke about. Manifestors have a very um, in human design, it's called a repelling aura. I don't like that word. It literally means <laughs> that you're not for everyone because not everyone's yeah. ready or aligned to get into their aligned action. So you're there mm-hmm. seeing the truth. And this is very similar to projection where you're there seeing the truth and saying something really profound. But if they're not taking responsibility for themselves or their lives, they're not going to like it. So I mm. see it as a protective, uh, protective thing as someone's energy. It's more about mm. you, not about them. You're not for every, everyone. Mm. And then you've got projectors. So projectors also are here to show the new way. They're here to show a new way of working away from the hustle. Projectors can do things very quickly and then you rest. There's no need to keep hustling like a generator. So like, I, I love work and I'm like, yeah, give me more. Like, I don't want to stop. And when I've done my work, I, I will be creating like something creative with clay or macrame or something like we, I just need to do it. It's, it's in my makeup and I do rest. I do rest when I need to. But projectors, you're going to need more cyclical rest, depending on what your design is. Some need more than others. So, yeah, you're here to break break out this old paradigm. You're here to show a new way. The projectors are the guides and the oracles. You see the bigger vision, the bigger picture. And so, yeah, you're here to guide people into mm. that. And a bit like manifestors, not everyone's comfortable around your aura yeah. because projectors can see deeply into people. And if people aren't ready to be seen, like it's interesting. So your quality, you like to me because I can see you. I'm very, I'm highly intuitive. So um, when I said about the the breaking, like the part that was, I think I did a card reading before. So I picked mm. that up in that. So you love being seen. You love mm. that quality being given back to you. Whereas not everyone does. Not everyone will come to me because I can see them. And so as projectors, because you can see into people quite often, like, oh, I don't want to be seen, yeah. you know. And so mm-hmm. you're going to um, people will either be really drawn to you or really not drawn <laughs> to you. Yeah. And it's about standing in that again and going, OK, they're not mm-hmm. ready. 
I'm here for the people that want to be uh, in, can see my bigger vision and want to grow into their bigger vision and are ready to be guided. And then there's one more energy type. Oh, and um, so manifestors strategy, sorry, I get carried away. Manifestors strategy Mm -hmm. is to wait to inform. So you literally Mm -hmm. let people know what's going and off you go. Um, You get the download, you tell people I'm doing this and off you go. Projectors is wait for the invitation. It's kind of similar to man, um, to generators in a way, but it's an invitation is a wink by somebody. It's someone being mm-hmm. in your social media. It's someone literally inviting you. And basically mm-hmm. what that means is don't share all your goodness with people who aren't going to accept it. You're not going to feel good. Yeah. Projectors like to be recognized. And to me, it's not ego. It's not egoic. It's like, is it? is this a waste of my time? Am I wasting my energy, yeah. my breath? Or are you taking this in? So I love human design because it helps that really beautiful um, energy flow both ways. And then mm. the final one is reflectors. And reflectors are here. They've got no centers defined. So in a, in a human design chart, every shape that you see in the middle is white. They're basically the mirrors of society. So they'll mirror exactly what you're thinking or being so if you're around a reflector and you don't feel very good you need to look inside because they're literally mirroring Mm -hmm. you back to you they're very wise they need a lot of time alone to kind of discharge and they need to wait to make big decisions about 28 days they work with the lunar cycle so they're really in tune with the moon and the and the um yeah the energies of the moon they're beautiful beautiful beings Mm -hmm. very very rare about one yeah. percent of the population is reflectors, so very, very rare. Uh, very rare. But I, I think we're going to be getting more and more because yeah. that mirrors needed. So those are the energy types. That's how to best use your energy in the world mm. at the highest level. Then you've got lots of different layers in the human design. Yeah, track. that's something that I thought when I wrote down that question. I thought because I've listened to a podcast about you know there's a lot of stereotypes about these different archetypes, and, and also people sometimes don't like the archetype that the kind of got they're like what because I remember I did all my family and all my friends and I was like obsessed with it and then like for example my husband was like oh great so because also something that's worth pointing out is uh the generator makes up the majority of the people like you said a minute ago reflectors very rare projectors are the second most rare and then it kind of goes up like that my husband was a bit like oh great so I'm just here to work and I was like no I was like well the, the world would fall apart if it wasn't for you know, you're the engine of society because he's a man gen, but he's also in a position of great influence at work because he comes, he's a bit of a maverick and he comes up with kind of like these different ideas. But um, I was writing down all the things, I mean, I already know them, but just to, just to show people, um, obviously I'm a projector, like you said, and every single thing you said was spot on. And my struggle has been oh God, what's wrong with me? Why do I get so exhausted? Oh God, why am I so, you know, I was actually diagnosed with, he didn't give me a full diagnosis of bipolar. He said, you've got traits of bipolar. And so it's like, we're, we're pathologized in society and told that the way we work is wrong. Like I'm like a hyperactive lunatic and I will write what someone would take a month. I will do it in half a day. And like, then I'll crash out. And like, sometimes Adam says to me, why are you so tired? I'm like, I don't, and now you've given me permission to just be like that and run with it. Mm. And the, um, sort of like leaning towards training as a coach, feeling like I am a guide for the people wanting to help other people. And because I can see the bigger picture, sometimes I feel like screaming, like there's someone, for example, who's in my life and I'm like desperate to give her all the answers, you know, like, can't you see that this is how you should do it? but like waiting for the invitation. And on that as well, you know, I I was really focused for about a year on my doTERRA business. It's still part of my business, but I kind of shifted focus. But um, so it was like that, that idea that you should go out and sell to people never felt comfortable to me. But when people came to me and were like, Rach, please tell me like, how am I supposed to use this oil, that oil? That would just flow out of me. And so I just, re- honestly, all these things and the penetrating gaze, people either love me or back off from me. And I felt that so, so strongly in my life. People are just like, they just get me or they're like, whoa, like you're either a bit too much for me or, 
And so you telling me all these things was just like, blew my mind. And I, and also what's interesting that I heard on the podcast was <clears throat> as we move forward as a society and as we evolve more away from that production mode of working, that I, someone said, <clears throat> we're going to be seeing a lot more projectors. So almost like the percentage of projectors in society is going to go up and the same for reflectors and kind of like balancing out in this new way of working. But yeah, just mind blowing. I just... Yeah just mind-blowing yeah there's some beautiful things that I love to pick up from there I love your reflections so with this work thing that your husband said Mm. I love to reframe it we've basically got that much energy that much passion and that many things that we love mastering so generators are real masters of what they love we just want to share it with the world Mm -hmm. So I don't, anything that limits, so when I do my home design readers, I love it because I'll coach people through it. I'll see the words that they use that mm. the trigger. So like, is it work? Or is it just sharing your energy, which you designed mm. to do? And if you didn't do it, if you mm. kept it all to yourself, it wouldn't feel good. So yeah, all these words, mm. words can be very limited, which is why I wrote my book. Because mm. I see all these words that people use and I'm like, that's not helping you. And with yeah. your, um, you know, seeing the bigger vision for your, um, yeah. for your friend, what I love about human design is it allows us to stand in our power, but also mm. allow us to understand that not everybody is like us. Mm. So like I have two projected children. So I understand mm. now that they don't yeah. have my energy. I thought they were lazy. Yeah. I found out human, you know, human design. Mm. Why aren't they doing it? Why can't they finish a, a, you know, a task? Mm. What's up with them? They're not me. This yeah. is the way I experience my energy. And so you can see this bigger picture for your your friend, but she has to find her own way and know when to ask for help. Yeah. And it's and so challenging sometimes. When you can see it, it's challenging. Yeah. And the thing is now, several people have asked for help. Um, and figuring out how to take the next step with that. I mean, I don't want to turn this into a, a coaching <laughs> session all about me because, like, I'll book in for that. But it is. It's that, like, beautiful invitation. The thing about – one last thing about what I – what blew me away about that is the recognition thing. I literally said to Adam this morning, like, please recognise, like, <laughs> what a great mum I am 90% of the time. Like, please recognise, like – um you know the 10 years that I devoted to like YouTube and blogging instead of I felt like we were having a conversation about all my negative stuff and he was like do you know what yeah oh my god like of course you're a great mom oh my god that was amazing that you created that and I'm like thank you I want that I need that (laughs) how beautiful is that you get to with I'm sure I don't know if some people have heard of the love language it's a Mm. it's uh, all types of how you give and receive love but this Mm. is like really your language like what your soul and your energy needs and it's so powerful like um, you can go into how to make the best decisions so myself and my husband I'm like don't just ask me what I want for dinner give me two choices please that's how my energy responds so we get you get to have these conversations and life gets to be easier yeah you know as well my four-year-old is a generator. My other two kids are man gens, and Adam is a man gen as well. Um, and uh, uh, you know what you said about Joris L. Bunny? I'm like, is he ADHD? He doesn't <laughs> go to bed till the same time I go to, to bed. And I can hear him playing. Um, and I did that thing that you said, like, do you want pizza or do you want pasta? And he goes, pasta. And it's like, it really helps me understand how to parent. So it's like if people listening to this that aren't really wanting to be in a business space, like it can just help you in your life. Absolutely. Like how to relate to people. You know, it's not yeah. just about business. Oh, I could talk about human design all day. <laughs> so the people listening to this, if they're even established in the business or they're just like, oh, I want to start a business, how could human design help them? I feel like we've kind of answered that a bit, but what, what would you say? Yeah, it can help you in so many ways. So obviously, that's the highest level. So say you were talking about doTERRA business, I was I also um, do doTERRA, both of our energy types and not designed to reach out. No Mm. cold calling, no Mm. icky emails going, hi, I'm starting a new business. Oh, yeah, no. Can you (laughs) do do, do, it? No, we don't like it, getting it, and we it's not good for us to do it. And yet the system sometimes, sometimes, sometimes teach you that. So you um, manifestors are great at reaching out. They're the mm. ones that will do it in a certain way that someone like, mm. oh, that's what I needed and I didn't know I needed it. 
Mm. So it can help you in your business strategy and how to let your energy flow. But you can even go into the deeper levels like what are your core skills. So, for example, I have the gate. So you have different gates that are lit up. Mm. Um, I have the gate, the storyteller. I'm here to tell my stories. I yeah. teach by stories. My brand is my face. This is how I need to operate in my business. I have um, a certain gift of needing to go deep, of being a constant, eternal student and teacher. So Mm. my business is full of information, Mm. whereas somebody else will be completely different. So I'm there for the people who love that information, who love to go deep who love stories, who love taking that information and embodying it. So when I show up on social media or anywhere in my business, I talk to, I talk to that. Yeah. So that's my power and that's who I'm going to draw in. That's who I'm going to and, magnetize. And you told me as well that my throat chakra is really strong. And so I was like, do you know, that makes sense to me. I could talk for England. And I also love, that's why I was like, I need to revisit the podcast and I need to revisit using a platform where I use my voice, you know. And it's like the videos on YouTube that I did that and I just sat and talked about ADHD and I sat about talk and I sat and talked about giving up alcohol by an absolute mile, they're my most popular ones. And it's so interesting. Just a quick one about manifestors. My brother's a manifester. And it is it's almost like a crazy joke. Like he is he's got quite a big following on Twitter. And he's put a couple of things out there into the world and they've gone viral. Not even a couple. There's about five things. Funny, funny stories. I won't bore you with them now. But And they, I'm just like, you could write a book about these five kind of funny things that you put out into the world and they went viral. And it was just like, they're all, it was just crazy. He can click his fingers and manifest something. Yeah. And it's just, and the repellent energy thing, we laughed about that. And he was like, oh, no, I get that. It's like either people you know people find me a bit like you know whoa like they're not sure what to make of yeah just amazing and when you find out all your family's types and friends type <laughs> you're just like oh my god that's totally um yeah um so tell me about your book as well it's called overwhelmed yeah it's called overwhelmed another word you give your power away awesome. to so as a coach so this is where my human design helped me just be like no I need to do this so in my top gates, so you have top four gates, which really show you your purpose. One of my skills is seeing patterns mm. that aren't the most helpful. And mm. I'm a storyteller, so I use words and my embodied experience to explain it. So I, I'm ha- I've had breast cancer twice. So I was in a yeah. very much a place of victimhood at one stage of mm. my life. And I realized that I wasn't living. I was like, this mm-hmm. isn't live. And so um, I've also got the gate to surrender. So I'm here, <laughs> here to help teach people how to surrender. Uh, so I literally, I did surrender. I was like, I can't live like this. If I meant to go like it, you know, then that's it. I mm-hmm. literally did surrender. I said to the universe, I, I, to go would feel easier than this clinging and grasping to life, which is taking mm-hmm. my life force away. Yeah. So I had this in my head, energetic surrender. Um, and then I started living and really enjoying mm. myself. And that was, that's beautiful. Mm. And so as I started coaching and working with more women, uh, I will say women, because mm. that's who I'm working with. That's my experience. I heard so many people say the word overwhelmed. And in a coaching yeah. session, I'm like, but what is that? For me, there's certain words that have their, um, that are misused, overwhelmed, I'm stressed why Uh what is it like I can't help you if you say you're overwhelmed but I can help you if you say I am taking too much on in my day I don't Mm. have boundaries yeah I'm tired we can look at that Mm. and so I found this umbrella that was hiding all Mm. the emotions and stuff and uncomfortable conversations that people didn't really want to have so it's keeping them in this stagnation status quo and I just I don't like the status quo I want growth like I'm here for growth honestly I have so much to say around that. And I think, you know, it's that coming up. And that's what that's what this business is about that I'm trying to bring forth. And it's, you know, moaning is a bit of a hard word, a hard word, but I sometimes feel like we can really get stuck on the negatives. And and I think as women, we have to forge forward with creative solutions. Like we could have cancelled this podcast today because I've got a sick child downstairs. And it's like, no, you need to crack on, you need to find a creative solution. I've said to her, if you need me. I'll pause what I'm doing from downstairs and she's actually all right in a minute 
it's that thing of coming forward with creative solutions and um you know there is illness in our house at the minute and I've said some husband bless him keep talking about him but he keeps walking down the house going oh feel sick feel sick and I said this morning like you know what you should do just switch it around like I'm getting better I'm feeling better today and I keep telling my daughter like you know every second your body is healing so it's just like a little mantra of like I'm getting better every day I'm feeling better every day there's like science behind that right that we can create we create health instead of putting sticking plasters on illness and it's uh it's become such a story for women and I'm not saying it's not true it, you know we do feel these things but just by deconstructing it and saying like right okay I really struggle with the schedule. Um, so what I've done in my business is decide to pre-record content twice a week. When I'm feeling good, I pre-record the content and that goes out into my community and I'm doing one live thing a month and I've timed it so that it's always <laughs> when I'm in my uh, ovulating time of my cycle because that's when I'm like, I can feel that I'm magnetic then. And I remember... Uh, you know that was always the time I used to want to go out and talk to people and stuff and it's so true and like the cyclical thing you know I love it that's so wise you're using your energy beautifully instead of just it being a slog and you know in the book I talk about um, the words need and and must and um, I I can't and I always think we choose there's always a Mm. choice so some days we might Mm. choose to like realize do you know what I feel really sad today I'm going to choose Mm. to be sad today I'm just going to, oh yeah. yeah, some days I wallow in it. Like today I'm just going to be yeah. sad. And some days I'm going to choose, I, right, I feel really sad, but right now I want to like mm. have a bit of joy. So we're always choosing the fact that you choose how to use your energy is so wise. It's that awareness. Yeah. Whereas if you just say, I'm overwhelmed, I can't do anything, which I know you don't, then yeah. nothing changes. And yeah, yeah, our words, I, I say at the start of the book, they're magical. They have power. Oh, and, someone said to me, words are spells. She was a Reiki teacher, actually. She said, just watch what you're saying because words are spells. Yeah. And it's just crazy. And it's like just setting up businesses that you that work for you. Like that is the new paradigm going forward. Uh, and it's like prioritizing your self-care first and looking after yourself so that you can show up in your unique way. And if that's doing something once a month and not running a yoga membership where you teach it every single day, then that's better for you and there's no right way or wrong way and yeah, um, so I feel like Karen you embody this kind of I call it the smarty method I haven't invented these things they're already <laughs> out there it's just that in this time of human evolution the tools are now there for women to step up to the plate and kind of li- start leading and so those tools for me, I, I separate into two things. First of all, it's self-care. It's prioritizing self-care, listening to your truth, your authenticity, your human design, all of that stuff. And then it's using these smart digital tools, programs and memberships, using email and email automation, all these amazing things that the universe has brought to us so that we can work smarter. And they're digital, aren't they? And it's, I feel like you've stepped into that space um very well so how did that happen because I know you obviously will have started out probably like most people with a uh, in real life business let's call it I think you were starting out in yoga teaching and things like that and then you transitioned into like delivering your offerings online and stuff can you tell us a bit about how that happened and is it working for you and advice for people who are like I'm burnt out. I'm seeing one-to-one clients all day, every day, like three clients a day, and I'm burnt out. And I want to take this business online and serve more people, earn more money. You know, so that idea of group programs and stuff. Just give us a little insight into your reality of doing that. Love that. Thank you. That's beautiful. Yeah. I'll tell you my story. (laughs) So, (laughs) um, yeah, well, I've got, Lee, I've... um, Way back in the day, I have got a master's <laughs> degree in law and a bachelor in law. Wow. Um, I started to go down the corporate route, didn't like it. Well, I went traveling with my husband, just messed about like bar work and yeah. um, just temping and then came back, got a job. And and then I was like, I don't want to do this. When, when I was pregnant with my daughter, my husband said, what are you going to do? I was like, Reiki. I didn't even know what it was, but I did it. <laughs> and I built a really successful holistic business before Facebook. 
before yeah. really email like literally I was at my body and spirit fairs with a little stall doing holistic oh. samples and I, I was fully booked most weekends I loved it then I had cancer yeah. so I stopped it then Facebook started to come out and things um but I always have this need of I want to reach more people yeah I've always had this drive so I um did my yoga teacher training and I got a yoga studio so at the start of the pandemic I can remember the last time I left my studio before the pandemic hit I can remember thinking I love this space and um at the start of the pandemic week one I heard this voice because I'm intuitive um, I heard this voice going close it down I mean no one knew what was going to happen mm-hmm. so I can remember my son came and he never comes and he sat on the bed and I told him what had happened and he said I can't remember, it was nine, I don't know. He just said, well, you're limited in that box, aren't you, mummy? Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, my gosh. Projector. <laughs> He's a projector. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> and so I started to learn about online. I'd already got my doTERRA business, and I knew that getting one person's email address, sending them the same information didn't light mm-hmm. me up, even without my human design. So right at the start, I'd invest in systems. MailChimp, um, whatever. So, um, yeah, as soon as I decided to go online, I brought all my yoga classes online. I created a membership. I do it really quickly and easily because I take the time Mm -hmm. to study first to see what I need. And then I invested in a system called Kajabi, which is everything in one. So I've uh, I've just got everything all in one space. And it's easy because I'm here to spend my time teaching. Yeah. And sharing my inspirations with the world. So with the systems I've got, I can have an inspiration. I can create the landing page, the program, everything ready to go in under a day. Yeah. So, so it, it enhances my life. And I don't have to, like, someone just goes through a form and everything's done and everything's filled out. Yeah. They're nourished. They've got my teachings. It's easy. And yeah. so, yeah, systems are amazing. Yeah, scheduling emails. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm doing an email yeah. today for in a few days' time because I'm winding down. So systems yeah. allow you to use your energy efficiently. Yes, I love that. I love that. I'm going to use that quote if that's okay. I'll put your name on it. Yeah, no, that's it. It's like, it's like people think technology, what's that going to do with the universe? But everything we have in life, from antidepressants to, you know, smartphones, they were created by the universe to, to allow us to evolve uh, and help us you know and so it's not about kind of seeing this is not a spiritual tool or this is you know and I think a lot of women who I'm speaking to at the minute in my little community that I'm growing that they're at a stage in life and they're just like oh Rachel I'm really scared about technology what I don't know what you're talking about sometimes and I'm just like keep leaning in keep in this group you'll learn and thank goodness you know, when I started out in digital marketing, some of this technology stuff was very intimidating and we were looking at all sorts of techie things and I learned that way. But now he talks about Kajabi, like Thinkific is another one. And there's all these teaching platforms, course platforms, which is very much what I'm going to be helping people with. They're really easy, aren't they? And they're really made for, for want of a better word, the lay person who isn't techie. And it's never too late to use these tools, is it? You know, and they're really, really simple and they're there to be utilised. You talked about the pandemic there and I just want to touch on that because for me, even though the pandemic was bloody terrible in lots of ways, it also elevated and forced many businesses to change and evolve. And I know one community that I'm a part of that was born, like yours, out of the pandemic. If it wasn't for that community, she would still be... Uh, in a bricks and mortar business and it changed her life um and so the pandemic really forced everyone to kind of like be smarter and I feel like it was kind of like the universe's way if you're going to take the positives from it of helping particularly women step up and serve more people while still you know we can't just change overnight the fact that we are mainly the ones that look after our kids we are mainly the ones that are the emotional keepers of the home and you know, we can't just snap our fingers. That is changing, thank goodness. But these tools allow us to work around our families. I don't want to walk away from my family and get a 24-hour nanny. It's not possible anyway. But even if I did want that, I want to be able to be there when my daughter's off sick. And so these tools are allowing me to just like sit down, quickly write an email automation. That goes out over the next three days. I can see to her, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. 
Oh, I just love it. It's my favorite thing. Like my favorite thing <laughs> is marrying like the spirituality, the universe and that whole feminine thing with, you know, marketing and tools and the amazingness that we've got open to us right now. It's like Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, as I said for years, the tools are there. The tools are there for anyone to start a business. You can start a business from your smartphone. And I love that. Yeah. So what is your advice to people listening to this? drawn to this and they're like that's great but I have no idea what I want to do and they're seeking their purpose because I know that you have done the Dharma coaching you are very um educated in like how and you also are just intuitive how can we find our purpose if we have no idea so the one thing I want well there's lots of things I want to say about purposes it doesn't have to be what you do to earn money in life yes I think I quite often we can get confused with that so mm-hmm. for example I've got a beautiful soul that I coach who is in education but she's also a writer doesn't mean she has to scrap the education because if she scrapped her educational job and put all the focus on writing as creating money it's going to take that joy away yeah. So um, this goes back to Reiki principles, actually, as well. It's like um, it says, learn your living honesty. What that means is do something in your life that you love. So what do you love as a child? Did you love drawing? Did you like nursing your dolls? Like, Did you love creating Lego? Um, so for me, I always loved creative projects. I love to get those, you know, little craft projects you have. Like I'd spend hours with them all writing. And so... I do that. Like in my spare time, I will literally get some. I got my son's air dry clay that he didn't use last year because he's not into it. That's what I want to do, not him. That's what <laughs> I like to do as a child. And I made some runes the other day just because I wanted yeah. to. So it's about having an element of play in your yeah. life. It doesn't have to be your work. If you, I would say if you're fortunate enough, it isn't about that. If you decide to or choose to to live your um your passions as your work Mm. um look at what you love what are your natural skills what do people come to you basically what do you love doing and then I definitely think human design works I I did my dharma coaching course my soul spiritual life purpose coach then human design was right at the end of it I was like Mm. don't want to look at it everyone's talking about it I don't get it I'm not looking and then when I had the lesson Mm. I was like oh, this is part of my soul's purpose, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and I had to leap in. So really it's about, yeah, just living your passions. And yeah. it might be that you monetize it. It might be that you don't. And you tend to find people um, either leap into it. So some people are, I need to leave this because I need to commit fully. And mm-hmm. so they're all in. Some people are accidental. So like, for example, my art piece, um, I just started painting last year for myself put some things up on Facebook and they sold I didn't mean to (laughs) like brilliant yeah the book I didn't mean to it just kind of came out that's kind of accidental and then um some people transition so it could be that you start to um Mm. put your energy and attention to something one night a week or one day the weekend and just see and play with it without the pressure see so it goes so dharma really it's it's what your soul is here it yeah. depends what you believe so but I believe we came here for a reason yeah and I believe and this is we talked about imposter syndrome earlier and I think this comes in here I sincerely believe <coughs> that we are like beautiful unique just jigsaw puzzles in this cosmos mm-hmm. and we are all here for our unique individual reason we all have something to offer the world each other and if we drop the masks if we drop the shoulds the coulds the conditionings and just step into our power and our gifts and what we love we would have global peace everyone would be happy everyone Mm. would feel enough because we are enough so if you follow your human design or if you just follow on a base level what you love and what you feel you're here for there can be no imposter syndrome because I know people have heard this but I hope Mm. this is the one time when it drops in only you are you only yeah. you have that unique design. So if you really like fall in love with yourself and be like, ah, that's what I'm here for and really believe yeah. it and trust it, imposter syndrome is literally gone. Might pop up there a bit and in, yeah. a bit here and then. And when you really get that power and stand in it and live and experiment with it, you're like, yeah, actually, I do matter. 
And if I matter, that means everyone else matters around me. So I'm going to honour myself and I'll honour everyone around me. And yeah, life opens up. Did that answer the question? <laughs> yeah, I just feel like when I speak to you, I do feel like it's just flowing, flow, 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 flow. In. And also, can I just say one quite cool thing? When you were talking before, your arm was moving. There was almost like loads of light around it. And it's really cool. <laughs> Sorry, I do shoot energy out. Yeah, I on my videos you'll crazy. see like things shooting yeah. out. Yeah, I saw something that you did, and you were like, "Whoa, the spirits are like really active yeah. today." And there was like little orbs of light. Yes. Of yeah, yeah. Cool. No, I yeah. yeah someone, think... <laughs> sorry, someone said once I made a, a video for my landing page, and apparently I pointed, and this light shot up. She's she's like um, doing a medicine wheel training course, and she says, "I don't really know why I'm here, but if you can shoot energy out your finger, yeah. I want to learn from you." I was like, I think there's a lot to be said as well for standing in your truth. And I've had a bit of a spiritual coming out, and I think I've been a little bit embarrassed sometimes about like this spiritual journey that I've been on for the past three years, and you know, all you can do is speak your truth and stand in your weirdness, if you like, you know, for what I'm about. And it's like, I'm just putting this out there. And then other people will be drawn, like your people are drawn to you and you don't have to worry about the rest. It's like this thing of, I've got this really funny thing on Instagram and I've observed it for years. I have as many people coming to follow me as I do leaving. And so my numbers always stay the same. And I'm like, Perfect. it doesn't yeah. it doesn't bother me because I used to talk for 10 years, I talked about being a mum, cooking, running the household. And that was my purpose at that time. I think your purpose can evolve. I love being a mum and I love being a stay-at-home mum, but now I've evolved and like that's okay. And so my audience has changed. And I feel like um my people at the time loved what I was doing and some of them have come with me but some of them are like no this stuff you're doing now isn't for me and that's okay yeah I you love know. what you said Rachel I want to get into that for a sec actually so your um expression of your soul's purpose does change over yeah. time but it's if you look back even as um in your full-time mum but also you weren't just because you were doing mm. other things as well you were still sharing you were still sharing your vision mm. So you've got those threads there that were being expressed in that in the zone you were there. And when you look back at your at what you at your life, you tend to find that everything leads you to a certain path. Yeah. So I have people follow me because I'm spiritual, but and I had someone say the day I follow you because you just studied law, so I know that you're grounded. Yeah, and and, like, and I find yeah. that I I resonate with that when I speak to you. Um, you're not in this world and this is a different balance this is a different balance and I spoke to my yoga teacher mentor about this I think it's really important to be grounded in the mm. world we're living in now yeah uh, and not be too I say this jokingly away with the fairies do you know what I mean because we are here now and one thing I want to just tap into before we round it up is you've talked a few times about surrender and I pulled a card for myself yesterday in my little oracle deck and it talked about the surrender and I think people sometimes and myself included it's taken me a while to understand surrender and it's that jostle between nobody's saying that surrender means do nothing and sit on your sofa and it's mm -hmm. that interplay between effort and effortlessness and not being attached to the outcome which is a yoga thing as well so what's your take on surrender people my listening. take on surrender is literally surrendering my ego its expectations its idea of what is true and what should happen and what should be and I literally mm -hmm. surrender to like well I, I know that I can't work all that out I trust this is my mm -hmm. belief so again I always say it's not for everyone I trust that it's all going to work out that I'm here for a reason if I fall back the most magical things happen all this efforting yeah. in my mind, this trying to dictate and control and like manifest yeah. this thing into being, it just causes suffering. And so the opposite mm. to that control is like literally just let go. Yeah. So I let go and I follow what feels good. That to me is, is surrender. Yeah. So like I explained, you know, the mental gymnastics of like, please let me get to 10 more years with my children. Please let me get past this. Let me do this. I need this. I need this. It's like, well, what if that isn't the plan? Yeah. I can't, I can't make that happen with my mental capacity. 
So I'm going to literally let that go because that's too, the the way I like to see surrender. It really I saw a, I saw a droplet fall from a leaf a few years ago, and I was like, ah, oh, get it. That water flows. Yeah. What always flows. It's powerful. It can wear down mountains, but it's gentle as well. Yeah. And that water, it's incapable of gripping onto that leaf. Whereas we uh, grip onto things so with so much effort, it's so exhausting. And, you know, if you have a vision of you gripping on with your hands onto something, your hands are going to hurt. You're going yeah. to get a stagnation. So if you just let go, say just, it's not easy because we've got mine. So to me, it's that letting go of, you know, like you said, expectation, trying mm-hmm. to control everything and just some trust in the world. And mm-hmm. to me, it's curiosity. Let's see. What if? Yeah. Wonder childlike yeah and yeah that that to me is is my form of surrender I heard something the other day and I I thought that was oh my god that was a bit similar to that beautiful image that you just gave there of the leaf and the water and it said something like nature has its own timeline mm. and it gets it all the, it gets everything done in its own timeline it just <laughs> and it was like stop trying to rush things and that's the message I keep getting in my oracle deck and stuff it's like everything's going to unfold in its own timeline stop trying to yeah, rush exactly <laughs> and I see so I'm here to see patterns I just mm. see as humans are so arrogant like I get over myself regularly every day who do we think we are yeah like we're just a small part of this amazing nature and so yeah I'm regularly getting over myself and be like yeah you can't control everything and believe and me, I yeah. liked to. I was a control freak, yeah. still recovering, but it's exhausting. It's not nice. Yeah, and and you don't have to control things, do you? It's just showing up every day, looking after yourself and finding the joy, right? And letting it unfold. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I could talk to you forever. <laughs> <laughs> that was a beautiful thank you. As we was, we were very varied. I, I enjoyed I that. Know, I love it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Karen. Where can people find you? Where can people? Where can people get your book from? So. I say at the moment because I used to change my business name all the time, but I don't. So oh God, on, I do. <laughs> on Instagram, because I'm not going to change my name. Um, I am I underscore am underscore Karen Jackson. And my website is I am Karen Jackson dot co dot UK. And I'll put the links below as well. Yeah, and my book's on Amazon. I've got some offers on on human design at the moment and things. And I know you've got a link, haven't you, that you can Yes, I'm going to post all those links. I I just want to highly recommend that human design reading um, for anyone just that feels like they just want to lean into like their own unique offering. So we're going to round it up. And thank you so much. I love that you were my first guest because you have helped me shape my next steps and just lean into my own uniqueness so thank you so much well thank you for answering the call that I asked the universe (laughs) (laughs) thanks thanks oh thanks Karen